Hello F Sharp and welcome back. Let's continue our journey of learning the features of the F Sharp language. Today I'm going to teach you about one that is incredibly helpful when you're having to read in data from a file, do some kind of processing and then output it again. So if you're ever in a state where you're having to do lots of ETL or some work like that, you are definitely going to want to pay attention to this feature. And that feature is anonymous records. It's being able to define types in place without having to go to the effort of defining them before actually using them. Now to motivate this, I'm going to use a simple example. And I've taken my classic type of chicken and I have expanded it. I've added additional fields to the chicken. And you can imagine if this is something coming from a a CSV or an Excel, like there could be many columns, there could be many different fields inside of this record type. So I just decided to pick out a few and then to work with those. Now, let's say one of the things that we wanted to do is we wanted to compute some kind of summarization about these chickens. So let's say we want to compute what the average size is by age for the chickens. Now to do this, I'm going to generate some random data for us to work with. The way I'm going to do that is I have a random number generator. I'm just using system.random and I'm giving it a seed so I can make sure that I can produce the exact same data set every time. I'm going to use an origin date and this will be the date that I use to add days to to generate random birthdays for our chickens. That's all I'm doing here. And then I'm going to create some random chicken data. We're going to say, hey, for one to 1000, we are going to generate a day offset, which is what I'm going to use to compute the birthday. And then I'm just going to generate random names. And I generate a random size. It's going to be some double. I multiply it by 10 to put it in the range from 0 to 10. I generate a random age. This is going to be a value from 0 to 10, exclusive on the max value. And I give some just dummy data for the hometown and state. So let's go ahead and run this and get our data out. When we do this, we have an array and it's giving us some records. So we see that, hey, we're getting average, we're getting a size, we're getting an age, and we're getting some of those fields. So again, this is just to be something like you would get out of a comma separated value or an Excel or something. And let's say like, hey, our, our boss has asked us like, hey, Matthew, I need you to do some summarization. So we're not, we don't necessarily want to go to the effort of like creating a project or some console app and then defining our domain like that's just it's too much work and unnecessary overhead for such a simple use case so this is the idea if you're just writing a script but you would like to take advantage of f sharp's robust typing ability to ensure that that script is still making sense and is easy to maintain and work with going forward maybe in the future you decide to graduate that script into a console app but for now we're just wanting to work with scripts. So we don't want to go to all the effort of creating the domain and defining all the types and just like, but we want it to be easy to understand. So the question I'm going to answer right now is like, okay, well, I want to, I want to compute the average size by age. So the first thing I'm going to do to do that is I'm going to, I'm going to say, let's summaries equal, and I'm going to take that chicken data and I'm going to pipe it into an array dot group by function. And what this function will do is I'm going to say, hey, here's a function to use to compute the key to group these rows by. And so I'm going to say row. And so a row in this case is going to be my chicken records. And I say, hey, I want you, I want you to group by the age. And what this is going to do, it's going to produce a new array. And each value in that new array is going to be a tuple. The first element is going to be the value that we are grouping by. And the second element of that tuple is going to be an array of all of the elements that corresponded to that key. So in this case, if I do array dot map, I'm going to get, I'm going to get a tuple. The first element is the age and the rows that correspond to that age. And just to prove to you that I'm not just making stuff up, I can hover, hover over this and say, hey, this is going to be age and it's a type int, which makes sense. And then I'm going to have an array of chickens that correspond to that age. Okay, okay. Well, now we're going to, I want to compute the average size. So let average 
size equal, I'm going to take the rows, I'm going to pipe that into an array dot average by, average by, and I'm going to give that a function I want it to use for averaging. Row, I'm going to say row dot size. And I actually often like to do this these days, where I have the opening of the function and then the body of the function. This is just stylistically something I've been adopting and it makes my life really easy. Then the result of this is going to be age and then average size. Now, if this was all that we were doing, we, we would be done. And I'm not going to go to the effort of creating this really large example because I don't want to get lost in the weeds. But let's say that this is just the beginning of our script. Let's say that we're going to be bringing in data from several disparate sources and then we're going to need to join them and do some further processing. Now, I'm going to go ahead and run this to prove that it actually works and we get our results out. And summaries is now this int float array. So stylistically for me, I, I get wary anytime I see what I call a naked primitive. And what I mean by that is it's just a primitive value with no context around it telling you what it is meant to represent or how it is meant to be used. And again, if this is all our script was, I would, and like there was like this was the end, and then we were just going to hey, you know, print this result out to a CSV, we could totally stop. That'd be totally fine. But I'm assuming that this is just the beginning, and that there's going to be a lot more than I'm going to do. At this point, I would be very wary because it is very easy to lose track of what these values are meant to represent. Like, what are they modeling? And with someone with dyslexia, <laughs> it is really easy to get lost. <laughs> so I would rather put some context around these things. Now we could do the classic F sharp thing, which is we're gonna define another type. And let's say this is a chicken summary, and this is gonna have two fields. One is the age, which is the int, int, and then average size, which is a float. And we could totally do that. We could totally go in and say like, okay, now age is equal to age, colon, semicolon, and then average size is not equal to average size, and in curly brace. We could do that. And that's not too terrible. And again, in such a small example, you don't experience enough friction for it to be obnoxious. But again, let's say like, hey, this is a thousand line script. It gets really annoying really fast to have to define types for all the intermediate data representations. And sometimes there's not a good name for that type, but you still have to define it if you want to associate like a field with a value. So I could have like chicken summary state one, chicken summary state two, chicken summary summary state, or like it, it, it gets really annoying. So we'd rather not go down this route. We would rather not have to define a type for every single intermediate state of our data, but we would still like to carry the intent with the primitive. So if we can't do that, what do we do? So this is where anonymous records come in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change this ever so slightly. I'm going to say, you know, I'm going to put a brace right after that curly brace. Uh, yeah, uh, a bar right after the curly brace and a bar at the end. And now the compiler is happy. And if we hover over summaries, we can see what it's returning. Now what it's saying is like, hey, summaries, is this an array of this new type? And it has a field called age with a type of int and a field called average size with a type of float. But instead of saying like chicken summary, like I did before, it's now doing these curly braces with bars on the inside. And I don't know what exactly what that kind of bracketing is called. I know like open paren and then bars like the banana clips. So if there's a name for this, I would love to hear it. But what is happening now is I'm saying, hey, F sharp compiler, I don't want to go to the effort of defining a record type here, but I would really like to associate these field names with these types and these values. Could you do that for me? And that is what the F sharp compiler is now doing for you. It's saying like, okay, cool. Now, uh, 
we are associating these primitive values with a field which tells you something about the intent of that thing, like what it is meant to represent. That's extremely powerful. What is also cool is that these things can grow. So let's say like, hey, array.map, and let's say I want to do some further processing. Yes, technically I could do that additional processing here, but I just, I want to show you something cool that you can do. Let's say I want to add some more to this anonymous record. Well, what I can do, again, notice curly brace bar row with, and, I, and I'm just going to put something dumb in here, uh, silly field, field, and it's going to be equal to silly, right? Something, I'm just trying to show you something dumb. Now, what has happened? Now, summaries is a new type. It's still an anonymous record, but now has this additional field. So we are able to grow this anonymous record using the with sun syntax to say, like, hey, that same anonymous record, I now want to define a new anonymous record, but it has an additional field. And we can use that same the F sharp kind of with syntax that we use for updating records in place. We are now kind of defining a new anonymous record in place and it's adding to its size. It's adding fields. So this can be incredibly helpful is if you're like, okay, I have some intermediate state. I, I don't want to just keep returning tuples as I go down this piping. I want to associate these primitives with field names. So I understand the context but I want to kind of grow this result over time. This is incredibly powerful, very useful. Now, here's something to think about. If I have let X equal to, and I'm going to just declare an anonymous record value in place here, name equal to chicken, chicken, and size equal to 10. And I have let y equal to name equal to chicken and size equal to 10. I've now declared x and y. They are two different values pointing to two different anonymous records. And we know with anonymous records, like we are defining a type in place where we create an instance of it. Are X and Y equivalent? Are they equal to each other? Does that work? Let's find out. It's true. Now this is important because it is slightly different than how F sharp records work, but it is, it appears different, but it's actually not. And let me show you. So let's say we had type turkey and it has a field, which is name. That's a string. That's a string. And then we had another type here, goose. It also has a field. <laughs> it also has a field, which is name. There's a string. And if I said, okay, well, let T1 equal to turkey name equal T. And then I have G1 and this is goose name equal to T. Can I do T1 equal G1? No, I cannot. If we have rover, it says like, hey, this is, these are different types. You can't, you can't do equality of different types. So this is something that's important to be aware of when it comes to the anonymous record type in F sharp. If you are creating instances of anonymous records in the field names match and the types associated with the field names match, they are the same in, as in terms of what the compiler thinks. Now let's do something here where I'm going to change the type of Y. I'm going to say point zero. Now the compiler is saying, no, 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 no. Like, yes, the field names match, but the types associated with the field names no longer match because for X it's a string and a int. And for Y, it's a string and a float. So no longer equivalent. So this is something to be aware of. Like you 
could be creating multiple instances of anonymous records with the same field names and the same types associated with those field names. And the F sharp compiler would say those are equivalent types, which makes, which makes sense because they're anonymous. And so all these types kind of belong to the anonymous family of types. I am confident that is inaccurate as far as computer science goes, but I'm trying to give you an intuition about how the compiler thinks about these anonymous types. Field names match, types of the field names match, it's the same type in, in terms of how it thinks about the problem. So this is an incredibly valuable feature when doing F-sharp scripting. That is where I have found it the most useful and I'm wanting to bring in some data and I'm wanting to compute intermediate results as I'm creating statistics and summarizations, but I want to continue to associate intent with the primitives. So that's all I have for you today. Uh, check, this is a fantastic feature and can really uh, speed up your work in terms of writing scripts and data munging because you're not having to go through all the effort of defining types for all the intermediate states of your data, but you still have those strong guarantees and the kind of domain correctness of modeling. And what's nice is if you change the shape of data near the beginning of your script, that's going to propagate down and, you know, you're going to see errors, which is like, okay, and that types no longer make sense. You're going to have to go and fix things. So I think this is what one of the things that makes F sharp so strong as a scripting language, where it gives you a lot of the power and dynamism of a dynamically typed language, but with static typing. And so I think it's fantastic and I hope you enjoy it. If you have uh, any questions, please feel free to leave them down in the comments. Uh, I'm here to help and help you learn how to use F-sharp uh, for great good. So until next time, you have a great day. Bye-bye.